Good afternoon and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live. I'm Joe Lynch. Today is April 7th, 2020, marking his second appearance on Somerville Media Center Live is City Council President Matt McLaughlin, practicing the best of all practices. Matt, welcome back to the show. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Uh, good to be back. I see you are taking it seriously under the guidelines that uh, any kind of nose and mouth covering is better than none. Yep, uh, I'm following CDC guidelines uh, that were put out very recently. And if you go on social media, you'll see the entire city council is committed to wear masks outside. Uh, I'm wearing my mask inside right now just to demonstrate that it doesn't necessarily have to be a medical mask. Uh, you can find an object in your house that works, uh, and this is very, really important for people to do, uh, not only for their own safety, but more importantly for the safety of other people. A lot of people can be infected and have no symptoms at all, uh, and give it to other people through coughing or sneezing or breathing, heavy breathing. So uh, it's really important that people take this seriously, and I encourage as many people as possible to wear masks uh, when they're outside. But I'm inside right now, so I'm going to take my mask off. Matt, good advice. You know, a lot of uh, the directives that we've gotten over the past three weeks change sometimes on a daily basis. And originally the CDC was saying, you know, don't, don't, don't hoard all these masks. But I think what they're discovering now is because of the way that this virus is passed, um, even the droplets that are coming out of your mouth when you speak could be a way of infecting other people. So to try to keep any kind of droplets coming out of your own body, uh, and possibly affecting other people, a mask is a good way to go. So Matt, you joined us last week. I'm one of well, the first Joe, of the I, live. If I could add real quick to that, it is important to not hoard the medical masks that are required by medical personnel. Uh, but there are, you know, I had my, uh, one of my aunt-in-law made us a whole bunch of uh, cloth masks and I have my buff that I use for hiking. Uh, so you can cover your face without uh, draining resources from medical staff. Excellent point, Matt. Excellent point. And take it from Matt McLaughlin, fashion forward with the scarf of the day. So Matt, let's get right into it. You appeared a week ago. You gave us a brief update on what the city's efforts were. Um, I'm going to let you take it away from people standpoint, business standpoint, government, city council standpoint. What's yep, happening since the last the time? Community. Um, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to people every week. I'm gonna to try to do this every Tuesday. Uh, we have uh, public health and safety meetings on Monday nights. So we get updates from the community, from the city uh, during that time. So I'm gonna to try to provide some of the most important information uh, at, that, uh, at that meeting during this. And you can find all this information on the city of Somerville's website, somervillema.gov. Click on the city council page and you'll see uh, public health and safety committee meetings are really important right now. Um, so the number one thing I really wanted to get across to people is to wear a mask. Uh, that's very important right now, and it's the biggest status update change uh, compared to just a few days ago. Uh, social distancing rules are still in effect. People should stay six feet away from each other at all times. Uh, don't go to unnecessary gatherings. Uh, don't go outside unless it's necessary for food supplies. Uh, even, you know, taking a walk at this point right now, if you don't have to do it, um, I would recommend not to, but if you do do it, uh, respect the social distancing and try to find places that aren't con heavily congregated like the bike trail that we have right now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and just ask one question. Yep. Um, the joggers on the community path seem to be the group that are not obeying uh, physical distancing. Are there any plans by the city to ask those joggers not to use the community path and to use sidewalks and bus lanes? The bus lanes are free. Yeah, these we, days. we discussed that last night. Um, and the city is going to increase policing of the bike trail to try to encourage people to uh, respect social distancing. The problem with that, and this is why we really need people to cooperate rather than be told uh, physically not to do something, is you're putting the officer at risk of infection by doing that, you're putting uh, the people all around you at risk if you have to be told not to do something that you should know not to do. Uh, so people, you know, I, people are still getting the exercise. That's a good thing. Uh, you just have to respect the distance. And, you know, even jogging by somebody, you know, you, you jog by them, you're a foot away, you're breathing heavy. You may think it's just a second or so, but 
you should really, you know, if you can wear a mask while jogging, uh, but most importantly, try to find a place to jog that's not going to be crowded with people. I hear the bus lanes are fairly free these days. Uh, well, the roads are pretty clear right now, and that's another thing people are discussing is they would like us to close roads for pedestrian use. Uh, and I just recently, I just put something out a moment ago because I really, um, you know, I, I really want to do a lot on pedestrian accessibility in general. But right now, some of the requests that are being made uh, would require traffic and parking and police to implement and enforce. And we don't want to risk their infection. Uh, if you see New York City uh, recently ended their pilot program on closing streets because 20% of their police force is currently out sick. Uh, and they have a few thousand cases of COVID uh, within the police force. So we don't want to risk our staff uh, getting sick to implement a policy when the best policy is to stay at home. I agree, Matt. I agree. It's, it may be something that the council wants to pay attention to at a later point, but right now it's contra to what the governor and the mayor are saying is no group gatherings. Yeah, well, I think, you know, what this crisis is revealing is there's a lot of issues that should have way more attention before crisis happens. Uh, whether it's pedestrian accessibility or Medicare for all or ending homelessness, all these things are connected and it comes out during a crisis, the fact that we're not prepared for these things. So hopefully uh, we should be addressing all these things, but right now we got to get through the crisis. So let's go back to the people part of it. How, how in general are people doing in Somerville these days? What's your take? I would say we're doing better than a lot of places. We're doing better than places that are outright uh, refusing to respect social distancing rules and some people making a libertarian argument out of this. Um, you know, we're doing better than them, but I do go out. I try to go out once a day for a walk or a bike ride, respecting social distances. And I see a lot of people uh, trying to do the same. I think they're trying to do the right thing, but they're not realizing that everyone is having the same idea at the same time. So everybody's thinking, let me go for a walk on the bike trail, or let me go for a walk in the Middlesex Fells, or let me do, you know, let, let's take a walk on the Charles. And when everybody does that, it becomes a problem. Um, so the thing I would tell people is to use your common sense and be observant of your surroundings. If you see a large gathering of people, uh, the city has put out that they have, you know, we have several hundred miles of sidewalk in the city uh, and in the surrounding areas. So when I go out, if I go out, I try to go to places that I'm not going to come across people. And of course, I'll be wearing my mask and just doing everything I can. I try to make a game out of it, of staying six feet away from people. Uh, so Matt, that's what's important. I think a lot of people here are trying to respect the rules, but this is new to everybody. So I would just tell people, you know, to keep your distance at all costs. Matt, you said something that hit me once again, and it's hit me every day for the last month, common sense. Uh, Mayor Marty Walsh doesn't think that a good part of his population are playing with common sense at the, at the forefront of their minds. He has now instituted a curfew between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. Any plans for the city of Somerville to follow suit? So we discussed that last night in the public health and safety meeting, and I really uh, advise people to check that out because we get the updates that, they, that the city gives all their staff then. Uh, and then we get to ask questions and get, it's really useful information you can find. Uh, they're not talking about a curfew right now because we're not having the same problem Boston has with people congregating at night. Um, and I don't know what's going on in Boston because I haven't seen it because I don't go out at night. I'm basically in at the end of the day and uh, haven't been out on the streets at night. So there is no talk about a nighttime curfew right now. Okay, let's get back to business. So since the last, uh, you were giving us the update on the city council since the last time you appeared. Yeah, well, let me just run through a few checklists that I wanted to have. I, I wanted to mention that uh, the governor has uh, increased closing non-essential businesses has been extended from April 7th to May 4th. Um, and yes, we're gonna be in right now in Somerville. Uh, as of yesterday, uh, there are 133 residents who have been tested positive with COVID-19. Uh, 46 have recovered, and unfortunately, we have had one fatality this week. Uh, so we're really sorry to hear that and doing our best to make sure that more people don't get infected and die. Uh, between March 30th and April 6th, there were 84 new cases. Uh, so that's more than double the amount of cases before that. 
and we're having an average of 12 new cases every day. Um, let's see. Also, the governor, so the governor's ordered non-essential businesses to close. Um, order to limit gatherings for 10 or more, 10 or less people has been extended from April 7th to May 4th. There's been a moratorium uh, on Saturday, March 28th, a moratorium on evictions in the city of Somerville was established. So this was the uh, executive order from the mayor that the full city, the city council fully supports uh, to prevent evictions during this time. Uh, it applies to both residential and commercial evictions and goes into effect immediately, prohibits the physical act of eviction within the city limits so as to provide for the public health and safety. Uh, street sweeping has been delayed until April 15th, and the city council, a couple councilors, requested that we may want to uh, extend that even further. Uh, textile recycling uh, in the pink bags that people may get, uh, that's suspended until further notice. And household hazardous waste drop-offs are suspended until further notice as well, as well as e-waste drop-off. And rain barrel pickup day is canceled, but the vendor will contact anyone who placed an order. Uh, okay. So that's a lot of the updates right now. And the city council will be having its second uh, full council meeting tonight. And you asked me last time, Joe, about this, and I didn't put that out, uh, where people can watch these meetings. Uh, so if you go to the city of Somerville website, somervillema.gov, uh, you click on that and then click on the city council uh, tab. And in that tab, you'll see an agenda with all the community, with all the meetings uh, for the calendar that's been scheduled. You click on the specific date for the meeting you want, which tonight, uh, what's today, the April 7th. Uh, and you can click on that and it'll have a link that you can access the City of Somerville website. Uh, so that you can watch the video from home and you can even participate in it um, for the public hearing process, which I know you had a question on. But the, but the key to that, Matt, is you have to pre-register in order to get in. Yeah, give yourself maybe 20 minutes before the meeting uh, to log in. And it is, unfortunately, it's not the best process, but uh, we're working it out as we speak. Can I go back to one thing, Matt? I was asked the other day because a lot of people are spending time in their own yards, in their own gardens. Yard waste, is that going to be on the regular schedule for rubbish pickup? I wasn't listed as not, so I would assume that it is, but I, uh, you know, you got to put yard waste in a brown bag, uh, not in a regular trash bag. It has to be obvious uh, that it's yard waste. And parking restrictions still in place? Parking restrictions are still the same. Thank you. Okay, take it away, Matt. Well, that, that's all I have. Um, I know, so tonight uh, is the first time in the council meeting uh, that we're going to have a public hearing on a number of utility issues. So basic, you know, uh, gas pipelines, electric pipelines, things like that. Um, and that is gonna be at the beginning of the agenda, residents who this directly impacts should have gotten a letter in the mail uh, with an explanation of the work and a link uh, to the website so that they can participate. Uh, so there'll be a public hearing on that tonight and there will be no votes taken. Uh, we'll lay those items on the table. We're gonna have the public hearing, uh, hear the case, and we're gonna lay them on the table and give people an opportunity to speak before the next council meeting where we will take a vote. Great. So some of the other upcoming items, Matt, I just wanted to make sure. Um, one thing, the board of directors of the media center met last night and it was a unanimous vote by us. We are keeping our facility closed through May 31st. Um, we're just trying to stay ahead of uh, public coming back into our building, making sure it's safe, making sure it's secure. So the city, statewide uh, May 4th date stands, the city's citywide state, uh, citywide ban till May 4th stays. We're just extending that a little bit further to May 31st. And I know on the agenda tonight, you're gonna be discussing uh, ways that the city can utilize the media center to enable live updates rather than day delay or tape delays. Um, I had my discussion with the city communications department today. Uh, they are working on it. We are gonna be working on it this afternoon. And then the other request is any city official who appears on SCAT TV or on Somerville Media Center, we're very happy to forward that to the city. So you will not only be appearing on 
Somerville Media Center, the public access channel. You'll also be appearing on the government channel in a day delay. Yeah, I spoke to the city staff about that as well, and I have an order in tonight uh, requesting uh, more cooperation, and they seem willing to do that. So, yeah, it's really important for everybody to know that we're working and uh, that we're trying to communicate what, we, what we're doing right now. One of the things I wanted to talk about is one of the things that Charlie Baker did uh, earlier this week, and I believe it went into effect yesterday, which is to allow the small businesses who have an alcohol license to now begin delivery and pickup with the food order of closed containers. Are you hearing anything in the district that you live in? You live down in the East Somerville district. Are you hearing what kind of reception we're getting from the restaurants about that? You know, I, I think it's a benefit. Uh, it definitely is. And it's something that I support um, just because, you know, alcohol is a big part of the restaurant sales and it's better for people to drink at home than to drink outside. Uh, so I think it, it's generally seen as a positive, but I, unfortunately the businesses are going through a tough time and this is really just to alleviate some of that pain. You know, some of the bars are gonna be closed regardless uh, because that's their number one source of revenue. So I, I think it's a good move on the governor's behalf, uh, but it is, it's going to be very small in comparison to the the overall problem we're having. So we need more grants for small businesses. I know the cities, uh, the state's doing that. Uh, we need some uh, debt relief uh, for this crisis because every, everyone's going to need help during this. So it's not just the businesses. It's not just renters or homeowners. We're, we're all in this together. So we need to have collective buying for assisting each other. One of the other things, Matt, not speaking as the licensing commissioner here, but I've been asked questions by some of the restaurateurs who have outdoor seating as part of their licenses. Uh, my guidance to them is until someone gives you permission to go ahead and do it, don't. Because that would be contra to, this, to the physical distancing uh, guidelines that we've got. For example, you know how close those outdoor seating chairs are to each other. Those are not six feet apart, neither are the tables. So uh, it's not an official ruling for me. It's wait until the state says it's okay to do it. We have the warmer weather coming up and some folks are gonna be tempted to do that. Well, it makes sense because bars and restaurants are not supposed to have people there. Uh, Insi it's for pickup and delivery only. Yeah, it's pickup and delivery only. Some of the restaurants I've seen have removed their chairs entirely, even the out indoor seating. Uh, to discourage people from sitting and hanging out. So, yeah, I love outdoor seating. I love going to Rincon and like many restaurants and sitting outside in the sun or on a nice summer night. Uh, but for now, that's on hold. Let's go to, you were talking about some of the uh, relief efforts that are out there, uh, not only for businesses, but for the folks who live here in Somerville. I know that we have a widespread distribution system for grab and go in terms of dinners and uh, lunches and food. Um, a lot of the not-for-profit agencies here in the city are doing the best they can with limited resources to try to keep people fed. Um, the supermarkets are abiding by a lot of the uh, physical distancing, but we're always gonna have one or two who don't abide by the rules. But let's talk about the positive on this side. Are you getting any information from the not-for-profits who are trying to feed people, house people? How is that going in the past week or so? Yeah, so I, I had a conference call with a number of nonprofit uh, service providers in the city uh, just last week. And I asked them if they need anything. And fortunately, the nonprofit said that they're on stable footing right now. But what they need is help for their clients. Uh, so I directed them to uh, the Public Health and Safety Department is providing meals for people. And uh, just last week, we were the city council. Some of us were delivering those that food to people's doorsteps. Uh, so there is a program that exists and you can go on the Somerville website, somervillema.gov. There's a link dedicated to COVID-19 specifically. And you can learn about how to get meals. You can learn about how to provide meals. Uh, you know, I had a conversation with people from Federal Realty the other day. They're providing meals to people. A lot of restaurants are chipping in. Uh, so, yeah, the number one concern right now is, first of all, you know, making sure the disease doesn't spread, but then also making sure that people's basic needs are being met. 
And if people are interested in that, I encourage them to check out the city's website, summerofma.gov, and check out the COVID-19 link. And we're always putting information out on our own sites, Matt. If there's anybody having trouble uh, finding the resources that they need, by all means, contact the Media Center. We can put you in the right direction as well. One of the things I did want to talk about was the mayor's update, uh, talking about the fact that Tufts University has uh, offered a lot of their dormitory buildings and their facilities for use during the pandemic. Can you give us a little bit more update as to how that's going to work? I can't, unfortunately. I, I do know that Tufts University is going to uh, allow us to use their dormitories either for people who are sick or people who are being quarantined to prevent the disease from being spread. Uh, that's the extent of what I know, but I greatly appreciate the fact that Tufts is willing to do this and the uh, president of Tufts uh, we put a call out to other universities to do the same. So I, I definitely appreciate the fact that they're contributing to this. Yeah, I think it's something we all have to remember that Tony Monaco, the president of Tufts University, is a researcher himself. So he understood very, very early on. And I think I caught him two weeks ago. He was on a lot of the national talk shows and radio shows talking about that initiative. So kudos to him for being the first and first in the line to do that. The other thing I wanted to talk about, and it's something that's come to my attention through neighbors, is they're talking about this decontamination center that's been opened up at the old Kmart in Assembly Row. I understand that partners and the company, uh, the company that has that decontamination, that is scheduled to open when here in Somerville? Is it this week? I, I should be open now, I believe. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I think the mayor put that out. Um, yeah, and the mayor worked with Partners Healthcare to make that happen. So uh, thanks to both of them. I, I went down to assembly. You can see the, uh, you can see it starting already. So um, yeah, that's a huge benefit. And, you know, just to address something else too, Joe, is uh, both the Tufts University uh, effort and Partners Healthcare, uh, we've received some emails of concerns from residents. Um, of having something this close to their homes. Um, and, you know, we're taking all the safety measures necessary to make sure that this is safe. Uh, but I do wanna you know, implore people that once again, we are all in this together and these are positive measures meant to protect public health and to take care of people. So we're not gonna walk away from our responsibility uh, in addressing this crisis regionally. And if I could say something, that this is not coming from the president of the city council. This is coming from me kind of observing social behavior. Yeah, uh, please try and stay away from the Kmart or the old Kmart site down in Somerville. We don't need a bunch of gawkers standing yeah. there watching what's going on. Well, it should, it should be easy, too, because the Kmart's been closed. Uh, there's no reason to go down there because a lot of the retail is closed right now. Um, so yeah, it would definitely, I would stay away, but it's also, you know, we have professionals taking care of this and they're going to ensure the safety of the community. So I, I see this as a huge positive that we're contributing regionally to addressing this crisis. Matt, how are our frontline, uh, our frontline responders holding up? Somerville Police Department, Somerville Fire Department, or Department of Health and Human Services. Are, are they doing well during this crisis? Well, I, I have an item uh, for before the council tonight to address this uh, because, um, you know, we want to make sure, first of all, that first responders, firefighters, EMT, police are not infected themselves uh, because they can spread it to their colleagues, they can spread it to the community, and then we have a uh, real lack of uh, enforcement, we have lack of personnel to uh, handle this crisis. So I put in an order requesting that all first responders get tested. Uh, the state has set up testing sites uh, across the state for first responders, but people have to go to Foxborough to get tested and it's not mandatory. So I really think it's important that uh, we test all our first responders. I think, you know, right now there's, just like a lot of places, there's a lack of supply of masks. So we need to make sure police and firefighters uh, have masks. Right now, the firefighters handling emergency issues uh, they go into the building to address the problem, but the police have been encouraged to not enter the building unless there's a uh, safety issue. So the police are being told to be kept at a distance, but be on the site. Uh, so we are taking a lot of precautions, but I would say we still need more masks. We should be testing all of our first responders. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, with the 
uh, street closures in New York that they had a pilot program and they decided to wind it back. 20% uh, of New York City's police officers uh, reported sick on Sunday. Right. And about a thousand or so have COVID. So we want to make sure for their sake, as well as the sake of public safety, that they're being taken care of. I want to go to one more thing, Matt. We have probably about uh, two, two minutes left, two and a half minutes left here. This morning's announcement that CVS, in conjunction, CVS, the drugstore chain, in conjunction with the Mass Department of Health, is now opening up drive-through 15-minute test facilities. The first of those will open in the city of Lowell, and I believe it's tomorrow. I don't know off the top of my head if we have any drive-up CVS locations in the city of Somerville. Do you? No, no, we don't. Not to, not to my knowledge. We don't have many C. Well, we have Porter Square and Magoon Square uh, CVS. And then and maybe, there, maybe in Wellington Circle, there might be one. Yeah, no, I'm looking specifically in Somerville. I don't think we have any drive up facilities, but there are facilities across the city that could be used in the event that we get to this 15 minute testing for the virus. Um, you know, such places as the Performance Hall and Arts at the Armory, those are now vacant, empty, and waiting to facilitate something like this. So I just wanted to ask you about the CBS pilot. Um, and whether or not we could expect it here in Somerville anytime soon. I hope we can. Um, and you know, one of the biggest issues on a federal level is the fact that we don't have enough tests. And you look at a place like South Korea, their entire method was to test the entire population and quarantine individuals. Uh, and they're, they're seeing success in the way they've dealt with this. Uh, and it's just really frustrating to live in the most affluent country in the world and to not have the standards that other countries are making. So, I mean, that's a, that's a call on the federal level, unfortunately, but we need more tests. Ideally, we'd test every single person in the country. Totally agree with you, Matt. You know you have a standing invitation. Hopefully we'll make this a regular every week, according to your schedule, but we're ready to help the city council uh, whenever you give us a call. We do have a, another show planned with the state delegation. That's in the works and hopefully that will happen this week, smart man, smart man, uh, for the Somerville go Media Center. For the Somerville Media Center, it's Joe Lynch on Somerville Media Center Live with Council President Matt McLaughlin. Matt, we'll see you next week. Thank you very Wear much. Wear a mask, everybody.